You're about to discover how the more money you have, the more difficult cruising becomes. I discovered this when I set off on a little experiment. I wanted to find out whether cruising in a suite like I am now is so much better than cruising, say, in a balcony cabin that I normally cruise in. What I uncovered as I headed down that experiment was a myriad of complications and all sorts of problems that people with money when they go cruising face that I hadn't appreciated. It also made me think and reappraise totally how I should cruise and I think you too may find this extremely illuminating. If you don't know me, I'm Gary Bembridge and my goal is to make it fun and easy to discover, plan and enjoy unforgettable cruise vacations. To do the test, I decided to book myself on five different cruise lines in five different suites and I booked myself on Saga, p &O, Princess, Viking, and Celebrity. One thing I quickly came to realize is that to be a suite, it has six key physical features. Now, how these features are executed and delivered across suites differs enormously based on the ship and the cruise line and which type of suite you're sailing in. The six features are as follows. You have a seating area, you have a dining area, you have a bedroom area, a walk-in dressing cupboard area, you have a bathroom, and then you have a big extended balcony area. The simplest version of a suite is like the one that I'm in here on Regal Princess, where it is effectively just one big room. So you have seating dining area there, you have the bedroom over there, you have a bit of a divider here between the two rooms, and of course you then have an ensuite bathroom. Here on Saga Spirit of Discovery, this is perhaps a more common version of how suites are done. So there's a couple of rooms here. So in this room, you have the seating area. Then behind me, you have the dining area. That then leads through over there into the bedroom, which then flows onto the dressing storage cupboard area, which then flows into the bathroom and the toilet area. And then out there is the big extended balcony. That's kind of the middle approach to suites. The next is the more elevated section where you take what you've got here and you basically expand it to something much bigger and grander. So for example, when I was on Viking Venus in an Explorer suite that had the same number of separate rooms, but they were on a much grander and bigger scale. So having got my head around the six key features that a suite would have, I started to be able to judge a suite on how well or differently they executed those six things. However, there was a seventh aspect to the suite experience, which I came to appreciate and came to value much more through my suite experience. And that was around the actual overall suite experience, the perks and the benefits. So that again split into three very distinct types. The first type was very much as I experienced when I was here on Saga Spirit of Discovery, where the suite experience is very much just about having a great cabin. So having the space, but there are very few additional perks to being in a suite. So yes, you had a thing like a butler service, although to be honest, I never really figured out what a butler really does. You had things like the mini bar, which was stocked and restocked, but you didn't have your own dining room, you didn't have your own deck area, you didn't have your own swimming pool, you didn't have a concierge lounge. And that was true on a couple of suites that I stayed in. So it was true on Viking Venus, it was true on Piano Britannia. The second suite experience is one that I really liked and I think helps justify anyway the premium as you move from a balcony into a suite. And that's kind of an enhanced experience. So here on Regal Princess, they have a few extra perks and benefits. So you have a special club class entrance into the restaurant in the evening you don't have to book and they have kind of an enhanced menu, table service, kind of preparation of food. You also have a concierge lounge with a really helpful concierge who will book restaurants, sort problems out. And that's a very exclusive little area. We can have drinks and snacks all throughout the day. So that's how it was done on Regal Princess. When I moved on to Celebrity and Celebrity Silhouette, they enhanced it even further. Yes, definitely here on Celebrity Silhouette, the whole suite experience had really been elevated to a degree that I really liked. And they have what they call the retreat, which is their overall suite experience. So first of all, you have obviously your suite that you've booked, which has your butler, or they call it your personal retreat host. Then secondly, you have your own dining room, which is called the Luminaire, which is really, really 
quite fancy and rather nice and they have its own kitchen. You then have the retreat lounge which is hosted by two concierges who will sort out all your kind of arrangements and that's open 24 hours so you can have that all hours of the day. And then you have a dedicated retreat deck which here on Silhouette is on two levels and you have a bar, you can eat food up there, you can have snacks, you have a hot tub. So that's a really elevated suite experience and it's one actually of all of them that I really really liked because you did feel that something was very really different and elevated. So that experience, the retreat experience, is close to the next sweet experience, which is one that a lot of people really, really like. And that's the ship within a ship concept, where literally all of the sweet experiences, all of the suites are taken into a controlled area. So on MSC cruises, for example, they have the yacht club. On Norwegian cruise lines, they have the haven. So basically behind a kind of a locked past door is you step into a whole world which is just for suites so it's a ship within a ship and that's an experience that I've tried once on MSC Cruises and it is pretty special. A lot of the suites are actually located in what they see as kind of the glitzy showcase locations so they tend to be very high up, they'll be in the front of the ship, they'll be the back of the ship or they'll even be in the case of some overlooking the pool deck. However talking to maritime architects and designers, they argue that many of the times suites are actually put in the wrong place on a ship because they put in those locations which could have much more movement or could have a lot of sound. So for example, I was once offered an upgrade to a Sky Suite on Sky Princess, which I turned down because although it's a very glitzy looking cabin, it's right overlooking the pool deck, so it has a great view, but then you've got the noise of the parties, the movies under the stars, and so on. So actually, on a suite, you have to be super careful and really cautious about location. So one of the things I discovered in my suite experiment is that you have to be as careful with location as you do with all the other grades. So don't necessarily assume that suites are actually in the best location when it comes to things like say vibration or noise. So I actually chose on pretty much all of my cruises midship suites because that in my view is the best place to be. You have the least amount of movement, you're also kind of equidistant between all of the activities on board. So that was a really interesting one that suites are given what are seen as the prestige locations but in my view aren't necessarily the best locations. So through this rather expensive experiment, I came to a couple of key realizations that I think could be really helpful for you. And that's about what's important when it comes to cruising. I realized one thing is really important. I do like to have a decent sized cabin, but I didn't necessarily get completely hung up on the huge amounts of space that I had, because although I do spend a fair bit of time in the, the cabin, I don't need all that extra space and dining tables and that kind of stuff. So having a good sized cabin was important. Secondly, what I realized is location is really, really important. I do believe really strongly that location is one of the most important parts of the whole cruise experience. So having a cabin in the right location is almost better than having a suite in a noisy location or a location that doesn't really suit you. I also came to realize though that I like the suite experience that has some of the other things bundled in. So I really liked having your own restaurant with open seated dining and all the extra kind of attention, the ability to always get a table for one or two or whatever you wanted. I also really liked those that had a very specific deck. So if you're on particularly busy sailing, you had a quiet deck that you could go to and get away from some kind of the crowds and just feel kind of a little bit more pampered and special. However, what I came to realize is the most important thing of all when it comes to choosing a cabin for me was location and secondly, being able to choose the cabin. So not having a guaranteed fare was really, really important to me. So coming to that kind of realization about the things that are important to me, hopefully this has also helped you decide as you've seen the perks and the downsides and the upsides of cruising in a suite, what is important to you. I'd love to know what you think. But if you want to know what is the best of all of the suites that I stayed in, why don't you click on this video and see what I think is the best suite in the world that I've ever cruised in. So see you over there right now.